Hey what's going on DDO players, Axel here. In this video I'm going to give sort of an off the cuff character update, channel update, and talk about a little bit of news, although there has not been a whole lot going on in the game in the past month or so. I've been trying to, or I've been trying to think of a topic for a news video for a while, but like I said, there just hasn't been a whole lot going on in the game recently. The developers seem to be really tied down and dialed into working on the next update in the Temple of Elemental Evil. There has been a couple things. They've introduced some new Mysterious Remnants rewards, or they're talking about it. I don't believe they've been implemented yet. And it's a quite a large list. It's a lot of different augments, and I believe there's even a special cloak in there. Nothing too crazy to get me extremely excited, but at least it's something, and Mysterious Remnants is a a bit of an issue. Players haven't felt that there's been enough rewards there, or the quality of the rewards have not been an, good enough. So it's nice to see the developers working on that, but as far as all their other resources, it seems to be tied into the new update on the Temple of Elemental Evil, and of course, bug and lag fixes, which... Uh, Monday, the 23rd of February, they are doing an update to, well, it's not an update, it's a patch, and it's going to hopefully fix some lag issues. A couple other things I want to talk about as far as YouTube goes. Oh, I wanted to throw a shout out to uh, VML. He has a YouTube channel. He runs a Barbarian, I believe, and he does a, a lot of walkthroughs if you want to check out his stuff or if that sounds interesting to you I'll put a link in the description so you can check out his channel it seems like the DDO community has been expanding and there's been a lot of new blogs and podcasts and YouTube channels stuff like that coming up so it's nice to see you know someone else getting involved as far as my channel it's I'm actually I'm I continue to be surprised with how well it's doing uh, have about hundred and 18 subscribers right now and my DDO new player guide videos seem to be really helpful to a lot of people um, it's my first video that's gotten over a thousand views so that's awesome I appreciate you guys for watching and I really appreciate all the support I'm not the type of guy who has a goal to get a certain number of subscribers or anything but I like getting new subscribers comments and likes because the more of that I get the more my videos get noticed and it lets others know more about my channel when you give my videos a like or a comment or if you subscribe to the channel so for you guys that have been doing all those things I really appreciate it and thanks again for watching all my videos and another thing as crazy as, as it is I'm actually approaching my 50th video I believe this is my 46th video so within a couple weeks or so I should be up to 50 also uh, I want to talk about some of the other awesome podcasts out there. DDO Cast mentioned my channel in their latest podcast. I'll put a link in the description to that episode and to their website. It's uh, ddocast.com. It's one of my favorite podcasts that's DDO related. They do a really great job over there. They do a weekly podcast. I'd highly recommend you check that one out. Another podcast I like is the DDO Players News, which is a bit different than DDO casts. It comes from the uh, perspective of two newer players. I know they play a lot of different MMOs, but I've really enjoyed listening to their podcast. So if you want to check them out, I'll put a link in the description to their website as well. Next, I want to talk about the 2015 Players Council. In my video on Mysterious Remnants, I said I wouldn't apply for the council, and I didn't, but I was actually asked to be in the council. So I, of course, said yes. It was very flattering to be asked. Apparently a developer or two has seen my videos and found the feedback nice. So, you know, I of course said yes. Anything I can do to help out the game or help out the developers, I'm more than happy to do. The Players Council doesn't seem like it's going to be a very time-consuming thing. Now, I've only been in the council for a, a few weeks, but so far it seems to be mostly just a separate forum on DDO.com's website where we get to hear a few ideas early and before the general public does and give some feedback to the developers. I was a little worried at first that it would be time-consuming, but it doesn't appear like it's going to be. Between this YouTube channel, my, my real-life job, all my other hobbies, friends, 
I just didn't have time to do s add another thing that was going to be time consuming, but it doesn't appear like it's going to be, so that's not a concern anymore. But one thing I'll have to keep in mind is the NDA that's associated with the Players Council, which is the non-disclosure agreement. Basically, I can't talk about anything that goes on in the council, and it's a bit of a it'll be a bit of a juggling act when I'm making videos for this channel I'll have to keep in mind what I can talk about and what I can't talk about I'll have to make sure that when it comes to news videos or discussion videos that I only talk about stuff that is actually public and not stuff that's just in the council let's move on to my character I'm almost halfway done with epic completionist my character is almost back to level 28 and I'm trying to decide where to go from there if I want to continue going down the completionist route in ETR again or if I want to leave my main character at cap a for a little while and work on some of my alts. I am getting a little burnt out on leveling. That's why I'm, I'm leaning towards keeping him at level 28 at least for a while. I can run some Mark of Deaths. I still haven't gotten my epic litany that I want and I still haven't gotten my um, Blade of Jack Jibbers, which I've been farming for quite a while. So keeping him at level 28 makes it easier to farm those two things. Uh, the other main alt, I want to do a Caster Cleric. I've, I've been working on this melee cleric for quite a while, but I want to put more focus on a, on a Caster Cleric. I have a, a wizard who I pretty much have decided that I'm going to TR him into a Caster Cleric. He's uh, He has one wizard past life, and after I get him to cap and TR him, TR him into a cleric. He'll have two wizard past lives, so that's a really good start for a caster cleric. Just trying to decide if I want to go necro or evocation. I'm thinking necro just because it would be a. I think it would be a bit more fun, but evo would be fun as well. Also, necro with the uh, upcoming veil vale and shavrath. There shouldn't be uh, a plethora of undead at endgame anymore. There should be quite a bit less. So. Necro should be more useful in the future than it is right now. As far as quests that I've been running to get my character back up to 28, uh, I've been trying to learn a few new quests just to kind of ward off the burnout. I learned Spies in the House, which if you don't know that quest, you really should learn it. It's very Mario intensive. There's a lot of jumping and, um, and hanging on ledges and turning valves, stuff like that. But it's awesome XP, and if you get it down, you can get the thing done in on Epic Normal in 5 to 10 minutes. Maybe not 5 minutes, but you can get it done around 10 minutes. And it's awesome XP, probably the maybe the best in the game. And once you learn it, it's super quick. I avoided that one for years just because of the Mario aspect, but once I dialed down and I actually took the time to learn it, I figured out it, it wasn't that bad. And it really helps me with burnout when I learn new quests and I'm actually getting burnt out on spies now. So I'm going to try to reach out and learn a few more quests. I'm thinking about learning what goes up. I have soloed what goes up before, but I don't know the I don't know quote unquote the quest. I would have to solo it quite a few times to really learn that one. I know that one really is awesome XP if you if you know it. It's also very long, but that's okay. It's a really awesome quest, though. If you haven't run What Goes Up or you haven't run it much, I really I recommend you do run it. For a lot of people, that's their favorite quest in the game. It really feels like an epic epic journey, sort of. Um, it's very long, but there's a lot of different phases through it. The end fight's awesome. There's a lot of the graphics are really nice up there. So if you haven't checked that one out, definitely learn it. It's a it's long, like I said, and it's it, it's difficult, but you know, just run it on a difficulty that's appropriate for your character, normal or hard, whatever. I'll probably run it on normal for a while until I learn it, and then maybe I'll move up to Epic Hard. Maybe try to solo that one on Epic Elite. I am, that's one other thing I might do with my character uh, once he's sitting up at level 28 is actually try to solo some other stuff on Epic Elite. I don't know if it's possible, but I've always wanted to solo Ghost of Perdition on Epic Elite ever since it came out, and I know it has been done by a few people, and it might be easier now with the updates and the changes. I don't know if the two brothers in that quest, if I could kill them 
bring them down at the same time. I know there if you aren't aware there used to be a <clears throat> excuse me. There used to be a bug where I believe the second brother only had like one one hit point on Epic Elite. They probably fixed that by now. So I don't know if I could solo it, but I might give it a shot, see what happens. I believe on the heroic version you can pull the second brother up with the first brother. I don't know if you can do that on the Epic Elite version. Like I said, I'm still looking for the Curse Blade of Jack Jibbers. I've been running Two Toed Tobias a lot as well, and I'm getting burnt out on that. Um, as far as the channel, more about the channel in real life, I probably won't be able to do quite as many videos as I've been doing in the past, in the coming month month or two, just because real life has gotten really busy. Um, I'm having, going to have to travel quite a bit for work in the next month or two, and work a lot of overtime, stuff like that. So I may not be able to do the two videos a week anymore. I may have to stick more to one, but we'll see what happens. I know for this weekend, the past week or two, I've really only had the weekends to work on these, to make videos. So we'll see what happens. I just want to let you guys know, I don't want to make you guys think, uh, you know, check out my channel and think that I'm going to have a video every three days because I might not now. I'll try to, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But the weekends seem like my only time to make videos right now. And when, when I'm traveling, I'm not going to bring my good headset and all the and that stuff. I mean, I even bring my laptop with me. So it can be a bit of a challenge to travel on the road. And if you don't, if you're not someone who stays in a lot of hotels, a lot of the internet connections can be really bad. So it's not good for uploading videos at all. Guys, let me know if you like this off the cuff video. If you like, this is more of a vlog video, just off the cuff. I haven't made a huge amount of notes for this. If you like these kind of videos, comment and let me know and I'll start making more of them. I do enjoy just talking off the cuff like this rather than my other videos which are as far as the discussions and guides those are lots of notes I really kinda map those out to make sure I cover what I want to cover but this one right here I'm just talking off the cuff so if you guys like these more real videos comment below let me know and I'll be glad to make more of them. I hope you enjoyed the video if you did, please subscribe and tell your DDO friends and guildies about my channel. Thanks for watching.